Greetings. Welcome, friends, to our video program, Jeevan Jyoti, The Light of Life. It is a joy to come to your homes, wherever you are, in whichever corner of the world you are. We want to greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to this wonderful broadcast. I tell you, we will not disappoint you, and Jesus will not disappoint you as we finish this. Today, I am again coming with the word. Just want to tell you the power of God's word is so, so, so unique and so, so amazing that it transforms people's lives. I want to tell you whatever we are trying to tell you is not just a philosophy or a theory or a life principle. It is way beyond that. This is reality. This, when this truth hits you, when this truth, you receive this truth into your spirit, it transforms every area of your life. I know you might be wondering how this is possible, but I want to answer you at this point of time is that when you trust what is spoken through these cameras, when you believe and receive it, uh, I promise you God is faithful. And this is not my promise, but God is faithful to transform your life. Today I want to share why, what is the ministry of Lord Jesus Christ? What Jesus did and what was the purpose of that ministry and how that ministry is extended now through his saints, through us, you know, through me as a man of God, how it is extended to you. I want to read from a passage where from the gospel of Luke chapter 4 and verse 18 and 19. This is how Jesus said, Jesus opened the scroll when he went into the temple. It was from the book of Isaiah. This is how he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The ministry and the message of Lord Jesus Christ is all encompassing. What I mean to say is it um, spreads and covers all walks of life, all situations of life, all kinds of problems humanity faces. You know, before I address uh, the message, I want to, you know, build my introduction or build my foundation why why this ministry or why this message is the need of the hour. This world is chaotic and there is no solution out there. You know, when you open the newspaper in the morning or when you switch on your televisions, you're seeing some of the dastardly acts, you know. You see those uh, horrible acts that are done. The other day I was reading a news in India and I was shocked this lady got mad at her husband and she flung her two children from the second floor of our house man my goodness can this happen in this uh, uh, in this 21st century what made this woman to do such a dastardly act you know and other places I see you know uh, I another one I heard I'm sorry but I have to say these things because I want to tell you that the world is chaotic and people are looking for answers another one I heard that this man cut his wife into pieces and put her in a refrigerator in a suitcase and the police found it out in India it's not just in India, it's happening everywhere. You know, we see, um, you know, sorry about that, but I have to tell you because there is hopelessness out there. I mean, let us accept that. You know, people are taking tablets after tablets because of depression. People are trying to find love in the wrong places. People are trying to satisfy the cravings of their flesh by doing things that they are not supposed to. They are hurting their body. I mean, I, mean, I can go on and on and on and I say it's very depressing. And there are people who are fighting to have position. They're fighting to be in, in, in to rule. They're, they're doing evil and wicked things to destroy and hurt humanity. 
You know who is behind all this? All this dastardly wicked act is the devil, our adversary. See, he is put, pitting you and me against each other. I was talking to somebody last week and I was telling, reality, we are, we, we, we are, we are from the same blood. We are brothers and sisters from the same blood. God created from one man the whole human race. You know, when if you read uh, the book of Acts, just for the sake of, you know, some people, you know, will say, oh, I lo look different from this person, but that is, that may be okay. But I want to tell you one, this one passage, and he has made of one blood all nations of men, of one blood. Whether you are an American, whether you are an Indian, whether you are a Chinese, you are a Pakistani, whoever you are, I mean, those are all labels. You feel hungry. People get married. Women give birth. You know, if you cut blood comes. Sickness uh, comes to every human. Um, death uh, hits uh, every human. I mean, I mean, whether rich or poor, at the end of the end of this life, we have to pass from this life. So the fact of the matter is, there is a homogeneity in human life. Pain, sorrow, trouble, joy, peace, these are all part of us. But what enemy has done, he has put us against each other. We need to unmask the devil and to say that, bring out who is our real enemy. Our real enemy is the devil, is that Satan. He is the one who is putting all kinds of anger. And I'm looking at a, at, a, at, a, at a person and I'm saying, you are angry and mad at your family, your wife and uh, your brothers for things that happened in your life. You're living in your past and you're acting with the victimization. The answer to your problem is not by settling scores with them. The answer to your problem is what we are going to share right now. And Jesus had a ministry to it. So you might, we, we may want to go into the root of this problem in order to address uh, the fruit of the problem. The root of the problem started in the Garden of Eden. I have shared this over and over again. But I need to build this foundation for those who do not know the truth. The, the foundation is that the disobedience. See, you and I were created in God's image. See, enemy through the distortion of God's word and by deceiving the woman, you know, she said, said if you will eat this fruit, you will be like God. She, if the woman was, begu was gu beguiled and the man followed the same process and eventually what happened is they fell in sin and the children that were born out of that flesh of the, the inheritance or that trait of sinful nature was passed on. So that is why humanity is without a solution or an answer. So God had a solution by sending his very own son in order to win back that image and likeness and the dominion which enemies stealthily stole. Because in order to have dominion over all this kingdom, this kingdom, the only way we can have that dominion is when there is a restoration of that image and likeness. The restoration of image and that likeness was through the supreme sacrifice of Lord Jesus Christ and through that we have this access into his very presence. So Lord Jesus Christ comes into this world. He takes on the human flesh. He is very God. He is God himself. He possesses the character of God. You know for, for a moment for those who are listening, I want to just define you what are the characters of God so that you know whom you are following. God is all powerful. God is all knowing. God is omnipresent, which means he is present. Uh, his presence is everywhere there. God is good and kind. God is merciful. God is gracious. God is all powerful. God is faithful. God is is just God's goodness or oh, is from everlasting to everlasting he is eternal in his being and he is a, his spirit and he knows everything he knows the thoughts of human heart from afar off and he upholds everything by the word of his power he is glorious he is holy he turns away from sin so Jesus 
the son of god the very god who was with the father from the beginning came into this world put on the human flesh and came to rem bring restitution to mankind so it is like this you know uh, when there is a, you know when there is an election or when a government comes to power they you know spell out or they roll out the plan of action in order to deal with various problems that are faced by the people of that nation jesus also is rolling out a plan of action or is rolling out his whole agenda for the whole humanity and he spells it out in this scripture this is referred from what prophet isaiah spoke prophet isaiah may be probably 500 600 years before jesus coming into this world spoke this uh, prophetic word see i want to tell you that there is truth in god's word and there is no contradiction let me explain what that means which means to say is what prophet isaiah spoke was reiterated by jesus in the in the book of luke in, and there is no contradiction see that is the beauty of god's word for the authors have penned that together and wrote this book from different walks of life and in different situations of life from in three different languages in different parts of the geographical locations and when it all when it's all brought together there is no contradictions you know at the same time if you put 40 authors in the same room to write a, about the same topic i i assuredly i tell you there will be 40 different opinions but that is not how it is but in the bible the opinion is very good god loves humanity god so loved the world that he gave his very very son the only begotten son Lord Jesus Christ so that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life let me put it very simply which means that when anybody places their trust in Lord Jesus Christ the thing is when a person receives or relies on Lord Jesus Christ whosoever which means you can be from any people group which means you can be speaking any language which means you are, you can be from any gender which means you can have any kind of color skin color or language or culture or lifestyle or any religion moment you place your trust in lord jesus christ you get entrance into that eternal life a life that never ends because there is a life after this life not the real reincarnation which some people talk about i am talking about a life which is after this life of, on this planet where there is a, either those who have placed their trust in lord jesus christ either they will be with the lord forever or those who have denied him will be eternally separated and will be in the lake of fire so jesus is rolling out this whole plan in order to redeem and to restore mankind and to bring in them into the full us and to bring them into his very image so that is the whole mission of lord jesus christ so he is one by one attacking the vices of the enemy so he says the spirit of the lord is upon me the word spirit of the lord over here means the very divinity the very nature of god the very spirit or the very essence very being of god is upon me which means it is residing in christ which means it is manifest in christ which means he operates in that which means it is moving in him which means that that spirit is behind everything and which is energizing and enforces what jesus is going to do and that spirit is from above and that spirit is god and that god's very spirit is dwelling in him and he is he is he is that very god and he says he has anointed me the word anointed means he has unctioned me he has uh, authorized me he has empowered me he has given me the whole responsibility he has given me the whole jurisdiction he has given me the whole uh, whole 
call empowerment to release and bring freedom into this dark world. So he starts from here saying to preach the gospel. See, it is most important to let people know what the gospel. It is so important to preach the gospel because you got to tell them the news so that they can understand and, and perceive and know it and receive it into their heart. I mean, that is the first step to preach the word. So Jesus mission is to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? Gospel is the good news. I'll come to it. See, as I spelled out in the beginning and I told something over there, this world is filled with bad news. Every moment you go out there, the news is always bad. Different situations, individuals are encountering, nations are encountering, people groups are encountering in different forms. And there is no respite in the middle of all this bad news. This good news is Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came into this world, died for my sin and your sin, and through his death and his resurrection, when you and I, you, you and I apply that, his, uh, his forgiveness, or when we accept him, his forgiveness is applied into our lives. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness means that you and I have transgressed God's very commandment. There has been trespassing of what God has commanded. And when that trespassing has happened, there is a punishment for that trespassing. And that punishment is death. Bible says in the book of Romans that in Romans chapter 6 verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God in Lord Jesus Christ is eternal life. So there is a wage for sin because the Bible says everything that is motivated other than Lord Jesus Christ is out of sinful desires you know no offenses to anybody but i have to tell you that all human human needs human desires are motivated because of that sinful nature and the sinful desire and that initiates and makes man Destined for the sentence. They are ready to be prosecuted for their way of life. The only way to escape this prosecution or this sentence is when you hear this good news and you apply into your life. So Jesus says, my first mission is to preach the good news to the poor. Those poor means not just poor financially, but those who are humble. In order to receive this gospel word, you need to set aside your humility. Uh, you, set, you, you need to you set aside your pride. I'm sorry for the mistake. Um, what does that mean? You know, you're trying to do something, maybe trying to fix a car or trying to fix something at home. And let's say, for example, you have tried it over and over again and you're not able to fix it. Now, there is somebody who is an expert. Let's say, for example, maybe your relative or your friend or a brother or somebody wants to uh, comes to your home or meets you and says, hey, I can fix that for you. Now, 
If you say, no, 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 I will take care of it, I'll try, but you're not, you're, you're failing miserably over and over again, and still you, there is an offer from your friend or a relative to fix this thing in your house, maybe your plumb, plumb, plumbing uh, system is broken, or maybe your car has to be fixed, and you are insistent you will fix, I mean, to an extent it's okay, but if you are failing, and if somebody knows the problem, they're telling, hey, I know what, what the problem is, and this is how it is supposed to be done, and let me do it for you, and you are still insistent on, the, on, on doing it by yourself, I tell you that's pride. Now let me superimpose that and put uh, this in context with the gospel. In order for you to accept what Christ is speaking into your life, it is so important to humble yourself to what Jesus is speaking. So you might be going through life crisis and you're looking for answers everywhere. You're trying, you're still trying. Those who are watching on live, you're still trying. You're doing everything. You have broken the coconut. You have been bowing down before those idols over and over again. You have prepared, you have dumped uh, uh, gold worth of thousands of dollars. You have, uh, you have sacrificed animals. You have done all those rituals as those precept, those, uh, your, your religious priests have told, but still the answer is not coming. And then you're wondering what the problem is. And here we are willing to give you the solution. It's a simple solution. The solution is the need of the spirit. It needs to be Christ directed. So you got to be humble. What is the meaning of humble? Means you need to be willing to receive and to listen. Which means you need to receive and listen. I mean, you can be listening something, but you, you, you can cannot, you don't, you, you may not be intentional or intently listening. See, you know, you can be listening to somebody saying something, but you may be paying attention to something else. No, it does not work that way. See, when you're listening to this broadcast right now, be intentionally uh, attentive to what we are, what I'm trying to tell you. So, that poor or spirit means to be humble. And a sign of humility is where you tell that I have tried everything in life and I have failed miserably. It doesn't hurt me to try this one. See, that's where it begins. When you acknowledge your failure, when you acknowledge that you are, your, your life is hopeless, when you, when you see all the hopes and the roads that you led to did not bring hope in your life, you acknowledge, okay, there is something more or there is one more thing I, I have not tried, let me try. And that is what we are trying to bring, bring to you is the gospel of the good news. See, you might be asking, what is there so much about this? There is a supernatural experience that you will have. For some it is instantaneous, for some it is gradual, but I tell you, hold on to that. There is power in this gospel. When Apostle Paul, one of the disciples of Lord Jesus Christ, when he writes to the Roman church, this is how he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. So, my dear, my dear brothers and sisters who are listening to me on this camera, it is the power of God unto salvation. See, what is salvation? From death to life. The misery the hopelessness, the disappointment, the depression, the failure of life, the hurt, the rejection, the pain, the sorrow, all 
is attributed to the sinful fallen world. And there is no escape for anyone born of woman in this world other than the gospel. You might say, preacher, the audacity and the dareness with which you are trying to tell this, absolutely. I'm coming with it, that audacity and that boldness because based on what Jesus said. This is what Jesus said in his words. Jesus said, I am the way. Jesus said, I am the truth. And Jesus said, I am the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. So Jesus is the medium. For there is only one mediator between man and Christ Jesus. And that is man, man and God, which is Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the medium through which you access into eternity. So Jesus came into this world to preach that good news. That good news is that I am the Lamb of God, Jesus the Lamb of God, the very sacrifice of God, I have done everything. Now, you can access into my goodness based upon my act. What did Jesus do? See, it is so important to bring the, the, the crucified Christ at the forefront in order to explain the power of the gospel because you might think that, well, this is just uh, some news you are giving. No, behind this news is a very powerful act that happened. The very powerful act that happened is the supreme sacrifice of Lord Jesus Christ. See, the thing is, for the Christian faith, every time we have to preach the gospel. We have to bring at the forefront the sacrifice of Lord Jesus Christ. The whole gospel means nothing without the sacrifice and his resurrection. Let me explain in the words of Lord Jesus Christ. This is what he says. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son, Lord Jesus Christ, in the likeness of sinful flesh, for sin condemned sin in flesh that the righteousness of law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit this pretty loaded word let me go one by one you know because the thing is it is so important to understand the background behind the whole gospel it is like this you know the house looks beautiful the, the, the house looks so nice now the thing is, you got to understand that there's a lot of things that has gone into that house. They have piled in, uh, piled in a lot of metal inside. Concrete has been poured in. Cement has been poured in. Pillars have been, pillars have been erected in the right place. There has been proper dimension. There was a proper engineering behind it. There was proper materials used. There was craft work in it. There was a lot of wisdom behind it. There was a lot of resources that was poured into it there was a lot of lot of a lot of design and implementation that went into it to build a house now understand it is now you get a house you know you see all made but you don't understand the scene behind it in order to understand the power of the gospel it is so important for me to bring to you behind the design of the gospel behind the work that went behind it this is what it says over here for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do you know 
There is a law which there is a moral law conscience in human heart. Oh, you should not commit adultery. You should not uh, look with an evil eye towards a woman. You should not steal. You should not covet. This is all we know. For example, you know, common sense. You're living and you're, you I mean, I, for example, I or somebody else, oh, in the night, go and steal in your neighbor's house. You will say, why? I'll say, just go and, do, go, and, go and do it. You will say, no, that is a crime. So which means there is a moral law written in human heart. Now, people violate that. Not just stealing, other things, a lot of things are there. You know, killing people railing and abusing, even having evil thoughts. All kinds of this sin is loaded. So man cannot be freed from that by his own self or by the law. You know, I mean, these governments in the world have all these wonderful laws, but never ending list of cases are coming to the Supreme Courts of the world. How many people are going through trial? How many people are in prison? Do you think that uh, just because the law is right and law is powerful, people don't violate? See, heart is filled with deception. Hearts are deceitful. And we are living in that lifestyle. The only, there is no, no respite to it. There is always inclination of doing evil. And we live in that way of life every day. So there is law out there. There are great laws out there, but people are violating. Why? The root problem is sin. So which means law cannot take care of the problem. You know, there was this uh, situation uh, in India. Um, I mean, it is still there that uh, there is a problem with the uh, uh, um, the protection of women in, in you know in this in this time's election you know one of the leaders was telling that he went around and did a survey and asked the women you know especially what is your most important need he thought maybe it is livelihood or job or anything but there are there are other things you know what they said our greatest fear is our protection the protection of women and protection of their daughters because there are men out there trying to uh, outrage their mod modesty. And they are living in that fear. Now, one of the, the, the ministers who heads the, 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 the police department, the law and justice, reprimanded the commissioner of police of one of the states and asked him, Sir, why this level of atrocity happening against women? You know what is the answer he said? How can we know what these people are going to do? It is there in their heart. We can only, or only respond after the act has happened. What, they, what he wanted to say is, if there is corruption in human heart, how can I perceive and anticipate what kind of uh, inhuman act is going to happen? Yeah, he cannot do policing uh, that is in the heart because he can only police what is outside. See, that is the problem. Only the law can only police things that are happening on the outside, but they don't know there is a seed of sin that is inside the heart that cannot be policed by any power in this world. And that is why there is only one way that can be policed or, or can be brought under the subjection is through Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder if they, they gave more freedom to Christian ministers to preach across the world. I tell you that we will have a lot of bars shut down, a lot of these atrocities shut down. People will, people will go back to their homes on time. There will be less sale of alcohol. There will be less sale of cigarettes and drugs because, you know, there will be sanity and humanity when gospel comes in because there is a conviction, there is a truth, there is a morality. There 
there is an integrity, there is an honesty, there is a way of life, there is a mode of conduct, there is a guideline, there is a guardrail that Bible gives. But the sad part is, the people and the rulers of this world, they don't know the power of the gospel that transforms hearts and humans and changes the world. The world has not seen what God can do through a heart that is committed to him. That's why it says, I has of the old, I has not seen, ear has not heard, not even entered into the hearts of men what God has prepared for them who love him. And we know that all things work together for good for them who call or who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. So you can do everything, you can bring the stringest law. But I tell you, you cannot police the heart. You cannot, you cannot put soldiers around a person's heart. What evil that person is going to do next? Yeah, the law may catch, the law may uh, sentence, that's all can happen. But that's the aftermath. What about, what about the destruction that was done through that heart? Is what we need to address. Jesus addresses that issue through the gospel. The gospel that is preached to the poor. How that is possible is the next question we need to ask. It says over here, Paul says that what law could not do, which means all the laws put together cannot stop men and women from violating the moral principles. It was weak through the flesh. Every year, every nation in the world is making legislations after legislations. But I tell you, violations after violations are happening. Because that is not in their hand. They just cannot control it because this is a heart issue. This is a spiritual issue. The only answer to all this problem, this solution is God sending his son. Sin needs to be punished. By punishing the culprit, the solution or the actual problem is not ascertained or obtained. You might ask me a question. Why? Because the thing is, the corruption of human heart cannot be disciplined or restituted by any human form of sentence or judgment. I mean, on the outside, you can do something to bring that into force. But in the inside, if still the heart is corrupt, it's meaningless because man is spirit. People may not go to prison, but they are still living in a prison of their sin. We want to bring this hope. So God sending his son, that is Lord Jesus Christ. I already put it, uh, put it in the beginning. I, I said it in the onset of my message. In the likeness of sinful flesh, I mean basically he took on this flesh, this human body. This, he condemned the sin. I mean he destroyed sin. Basically... Jesus as the blemishless sacrifice on the cross. I'm talking about the, the, what has happened behind the building of this house. The behind, what has happened is, Jesus took all the sin of all humanity on him. He was the only sacrifice, blemishless sacrifice who could take the sin of all humanity, past, present, and future. And he took it. He's the perfect sacrifice, the vicarious sacrifice, the substitutionary sacrifice. He became the payment to fulfill the demands of law 
and fulfill the demands of God's holiness and justice. Now, all the sins that you commit, there is forgiveness through Lord Jesus Christ. How that is possible? I tell you there is a freedom that your conscience experiences when Lord Jesus Christ comes into your life. That's why Apostle Paul in Romans 8 1 says, There is now therefore no condemnation on them who are in Christ Jesus, who have put on Lord Jesus Christ into their life, which means who have accepted him, who have taken him into their heart. How you take him into the, your heart is you confess with your mouth. See, God has given us a mouth. Every miracle is voice activated. Power in the tongue. Life and death in the power of tongue. They who will order it shall eat the fruit thereof. It is written in the book of Hebrews. Uh, sorry, book of Proverbs. So when you accept him, you know, confess him with your mouth, and believe in your heart that is Lord Jesus Christ in your life. You know, we need to understand the term Lord. Jesus said, they call me Lord, Lord. And uh, they tell that uh, they honor me with, uh, they speak with the lips, but they don't honor me in the heart. See, knowing Jesus is not lip service. I want to remove that wrong notion you have in your heart. A lot of people, you know, they do a lot of lip service. Deep down in the heart, heart it's, um, it's a mess. It's like a graveyard. That's not how when Jesus comes into your heart. Everything about you, you become like a mirror inside out. What is there inside is transparent. It's seen. It's see-through. There is honesty. There is truth. There is sincerity. There is love. There is genuineness. There is freedom. Now you don't want to hate your brother or sister. Now you don't have those urges to go and murder or kill or to create confusion or to steal or to covet or to do adultery or to outrage a modesty of a of a woman or a, or or a daughter why because you say that jesus is the Assignments that are I mean when Jesus comes into your life, when Jesus comes into your life, mind you, he decides things about your life. That is what is called Lordship of Jesus Christ. He is the master, he is now so old person, A B C, whatever your name is. I'm hearing a name, Akshay, Arun, Anuj. Now when Jesus comes in your life, Anuj, Jyoti, there is a change of ownership. Not only change of ownership, there is a change of residentship. Now Christ has taken residence in your life. So that gospel is the building of that house. He, he said he, he will destroy this temple. And in three days he will raise it up. So Jesus, Jesus took everything. Your sin, your sickness, your sorrows. For your eternal hope. He, he was redeemed. He did everything just as if you are not a sinner. So when you accept that, when that, that is the gospel, Lord Jesus Christ came into this world. 
died for the sinners, rose again from the dead, according to my gospel, Paul says. And when you believe in that, when you receive it, see, so the work is already done. So I do I have not I don't have to do anything. I mean, you have to receive him. You need to accept him. See, the solution to the problem of your life is found in Jesus. Jesus is the answer for world's problem. You might, you know, challenge and say, well, that looks very flimsy on the outside. Yeah, it looks very flimsy on the outside. But I tell you, when it comes inside, it will become a firm foundation. Maybe it looks like that on the outside. See, the thing is, there are things that look firm on the outside, but they are flimsy on the inside. You know, Jesus, when he comes maybe on the outside, what happened? Nothing happened. Maybe looks like, but it's beginning to happen. His power and his presence, his promises are going to come sure in your life. There is a divine transaction. You now enter into the family of God. You get his nature, the nature that was lost in sin and in the, in the sinful nature because of the Adamic race, because of the birth into the Adamic race has been replaced by a new DNA. You are born again. There is a born again experience. You are born of your mother and there is a new birth. There is a new creation happening. There is a transaction where there is an exchange happening. All your evil has been given out and all your evil nature has been given out and in, in place of that, what you get is the nature of God. You get the born again nature. You get the invincibility of Christ. You become conquerors through Lord Jesus Christ. He who is born of God overcomes. You become an overcomer through Lord Jesus Christ. See, it's so important for me to explain this gospel. Because the thing is, if I don't explain how this house is built, you will not understand the power behind it. So now when you have Jesus in your life, you have an access into the very presence of God. See, man is a spirit. Though you are physical in this world, what happens? You know, yeah, God starts hearing. Taste and see that the Lord is good. God is going to answer your prayer. Today I'm going to challenge somebody on this camera. You know, take my word in writing. This man said, when I believe in Lord Jesus Christ, my life will change. Things will begin to change. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. I'm hearing a, a number six months. Turn around in six months. Instantaneous changes in a day. Within a month, your surroundings changing. Within two months, your reconciliation. Things are beginning to happen. I have to guarantee you and tell you with all honesty and sincerity. You try Jesus. You have tried everything in this world. Why don't you try this Jesus? He is the answer. You have went to every shop. You have went to every temple. You have went, done everything. Now try the best to understand Jesus. Hallelujah. I tell you, I'm looking at somebody who is going to watch, who is watching now, and those who are going to watch after this, you try Jesus. I release in the name of Jesus a power that transforms everything around you. Receive it now, now in Jesus' name. I see an impartation happening right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You write back to us. Your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. It looks flimsy on the outside. It is so firm. It is so firm. 
Nobody can steal it from you. It is so firm. No one can shake or break you. It is so firm that nothing can get into it that will hurt your life. So Jesus preaches this gospel to the good news. It is done. My friend, you got to just appropriate. The product is already made. You know, you go to the store, you go and buy, you know, go to the car dealership, you buy a car. You don't have to build a car, but you have to pay for it. Here the thing is, the product is made and it's already paid. It's paid and done and finished. You just need to receive this free gift. Free gift of salvation. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. This gift is for you. So he wants to give you the good news that is firm and truthful, that's based on the work on the cross. Lord Jesus Christ's work will change and transform your life. I wish I could write down for some of you and challenge you. Okay, try Jesus for the next one month and come back and tell us. Okay, let's put a challenge like this. Try Jesus for a few days. See the difference. See the difference. I promise you, your life is beginning to change. Because God stands by what he says. See, the good part about when you receive this gospel is, he does not run away. It is not like, you know, when you go and buy something from the store and, oh, we did not sell it. Oh, bring the receipt. No. Don't have to bring any receipt on it. He knows you by your name before you were born. You don't have to use those special numbers or codes or keys to reach out to Jesus. I gave my life to you. Turn my life around. I believe things are beginning to change. I see in the spirit. I see in the spirit realm things are beginning to change. Cancer. Oh, you receive Lord Jesus Christ. I see that cancer crushing now. Disintegrated in Jesus name. I see those, those cataracts from the eyes are going now. I see bones aligning in Jesus name. Receive your miracle. To heal that is broken hearted. Jesus wants to heal your broken heart. Do you want to give your life to him? Are you depressed? He wants to preach deliverance. You're under any kind of spirits, depression, fear, schizophrenia, bipolar, mental disorder, anger issue, perverted lifestyle, pornography, lust, sexual obsession, alcohol. What is your problem? Can Jesus fix it? Absolutely. Jesus, take all my vices, my wickedness and give me you. Change me, change me, change me. This, I believe in this message, those who have listened, and if you apply this, Jesus is changing your life. He will set you free. You have been slave to that sin. Jesus doesn't condemn you. Recovering the sight of the blind. I say blind eyes open naturally. Blind eyes open. I see in the spirit. If you are blind, lay your hands on that. I see in the spirit God opening blind eyes, those retinas and those cornea being made in Jesus' name. I see that happening. And to set those who are captive in prison, God wants to, if you're watching from the prison, I want to tell you Jesus wants to set you, you free. If you're watching from a red light district, he wants to set you at liberty. <clears throat> and he wants to also tell 
that he is coming back very, very soon. This Bible is very, very true. Jesus is coming back very, very soon. Don't be, be beguiled or disguised or, or uh, be in a wrong, false impression. Jesus is coming back soon. See, this is, this is available to you. But the thing is, if you don't make your choice now, a day of reckoning is coming. A day of judgment is coming. When those who have not placed their trust in Lord Jesus Christ, they who have not accepted the offer of salvation, the gift of, uh, gift of God, the gift of forgiveness, I tell you, an eternal judgment is coming. A judgment where you will be eternally separated from God, where you will be in a lake of fire. I mean, my words are not even close to explaining that. It's a place of burning sulfur and fire, weeping and gnashing of teeth. The sorrow and that pain in that place is never ending. It is horrendous. You will not even want the worst of the enemies to be there. I tell you, my dear friend, why you want to waste your time. Now is the time. You might say, I will, I will postpone it for tomorrow. But I tell you, to, who knows tomorrow if you are not alive. And if you did not uh, receive Jesus Christ and died without knowing him, you are headed towards that hell. Please, 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 please. Now, 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 Jesus wants to speak to you. Jesus will come to you in your dreams and visions. I pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus, transform your life. Thank you so much for watching. Lord Jesus, they have heard this word. Transform and change their life. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Let this word, this truth change and transform their life. I praise you. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Holy Spirit, do your mighty work in this moment. Oh, hallelujah. Let them have a divine exchange, a divine transaction ho happen over here right now in Jesus' name. We release the power of God. Holy Spirit, release your power. Send your angels right now. Minister to people. I pray in the name of Jesus, every bondage be broken right now. Now, 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 now. I see people who are watching this. Your bondages are being broken. Hallelujah. All kinds of bondages. I see in the spirit bondages bondage is broken. I see in the spirit bondage is broken. I see, see, see all kinds of vices, sinful lifestyles being broken right now in Jesus name. Now, 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 well, now, now, it's broken now, now, one by one, it's leaving you, leaving you, leaving you, leaving you, leaving you. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Jesus releases freedom into your life. Freedom, freedom, your circumstance, your situation, everything around you changes now. Thank you so much. Write back to us. God bless you. Thank you so much. May your life be never be the same. Thank you. Thank you so much for broad watching this broadcast. We'll come back again next week and share your story. Write to us oh, through the Facebook and through the emails. We want to minister to you. We want to speak. We want to, sh we want to help you. Thank you so much. Thank you once again for watching this broadcast. Amen.